All right, what's up, fans? So I just awkwardly realized we're going live on my personal Facebook page and not my Facebook group. So no turning back now, because we have like a dozen people on here. So uh, put a one down below if uh, you're watching right now, and let me know where you're watching from, because uh, I'd love to see how we're able to all get together from around the whole world. So we've been hearing this a lot uh, during this whole thing happening, right, with COVID. So uh, here's the thing though, fam, like, COVID has approached every, all of us in one way or another in its own form. It doesn't just have to come in this big pandemic. This is just happens to be a higher degree of what's happening. So uh, you guys are just lucky on my personal page then because usually I only do this kind of stuff in my Facebook groups or my private groups. So surprise. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then go ahead and make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you're watching this live right now, make sure that you give us a thumbs up and go ahead and share the video since clearly I put it on my personal page and not in my Facebook groups. Uh, so um, over here, we're gonna talk about how to handle these two things and how you're gonna be able to address this even post COVID, right? Because at the end of the day, um, even though right now businesses are legitimately shutting down, right? There's still ways around that. We're gonna talk about that in a sec, how to frame that and how to be able to better your business and what we're currently doing to make sure that we are armed and prepared for this kind of thing, not just now, but to make sure that it works in conjunction with the future to build a stronger foundation to your business. So you hear this one a lot too, call me next month, all right? This is with or without COVID, right? Um, you're gonna hear this one all the time. So we're gonna get to what we can say or do. I wrote my notes down so we can just go through this pretty quick. I've got like 15 minutes. So we're gonna go through the training. Any questions you have, drop them below, I'll answer them. Uh, let me know you're watching too. Uh, hey, what's up, Brando? Um, all right, so let's just dive right into this. So right off the bat, I'm gonna give you guys scripts. So if you want to, just go ahead and pause this video. Uh, you can, or rewind it or whatever, whenever you watch the replay. Uh, and by the way, if you're on, hashtag live down below, if you're on YouTube or Facebook live. Uh, so this way we can help expand the reach, okay? Or hashtag replay if you're rewatching it. But basically, um, I'm gonna give you a few different scripts that you can use, and we've been using these forever, and it doesn't really matter uh, what, it, whether it's a big pandemic or not, at the end of the day, as a business looking to acquire new business, you're gonna hear things like, call me next month all the time, okay? But for some reason, people are seeing it as like this un, uh, you know, unbreakable barrier of entry for some reason. Um, and then my biz closed down. This is obviously a new one that companies right now online that are working with traditional local business, this is something new that you're having to deal with because now you're actually having to better understand how to help your buyer in a way that helps them, okay? Now you're actually having to grow your business in a way that can actually accommodate their needs and not just what you wanna sell. So this is gonna be where, uh, it's gonna be a major transition for businesses and the ones that are have been focusing on their, their service and their company, their product development, fulfillment, delivery, all that, you're gonna thrive. But if you've just been like doing flashy stuff to try to sell something, it's gonna be a really tough time for you. Um, so what I'm gonna show you here is gonna help you overcome some of that. So here's a script, I actually wrote it down so this way we can move through this pretty quick. Um, but this is what we all use, uh, all my clients use. So you wanna get them on a call, first of all, okay? And by the way, if you guys don't have stuff written down in front of you all the time, you're just trying to wing everything, that used to be me, and I'm telling you right now that you're performing nowhere near as efficiently as you can if you don't have it written down, okay? So um, first of all, you wanna make sure you get them on a call. You don't wanna just say, yeah, I'll call you back next month. Yeah, let's go ahead and do this uh, whenever this stuff you know, blows over. Like, you don't wanna do that. I'm gonna explain how we can do follow-up here towards the end of this, but here's what you wanna say in the DM or in your email to make sure you can get them on a call. Because when you get on a call, your whole goal on that call, because right now you're selling the appointment, that's it. Your whole goal on the call is gonna to be to reframe the situation to help raise their level of thinking to understand that there is things they can do right now in order to get ahead, okay? Because right now, everyone's thinking from a traditional point of view to where, well, if I'm in business, this is how I've been doing business, so this is how you do business. That's where their mind's at, so that's why they feel like they're at rock bottom. But the truth is, there's a saying, you don't know what you don't know. That's what's happening to the economy right now. So that's why it's so important more than ever to find a coach that's doing what you need done or that has gone through what you're now like going through. Um, so anyway, 
this is a principle always you want to get them on a call now the frame is going to be a little different here because we're dealing with like you know what we have going on right now i'm pointing this way because my there's a bunch of windows over here you're going to say uh because they're going to say like call me next month let's do this when this blows over um, i'm looking at some stuff just call me later what you're going to say is i totally get that crazy time we're in no doubt okay let's do a call tomorrow so we can just evaluate your options our most successful clients have been using this time to plan their next move. I have this and this time open tomorrow. Which do you prefer? Now, it's really important to make sure that you phrase and word this in a way that I just put it on here because the right off the bat, there's a certain way that you want to be able to uh, reshift a belief. Okay. And the first thing you want to do is acknowledge whatever just happened. You always acknowledge step one. Okay. So you acknowledge it. And then you want to address or agree it, agree with it, and then you want to reframe it. Okay, so that's why right off the bat you just agree and say totally get it, crazy time. So this way you're acknowledging a response. It's called active listening. Okay, um, and then you're going to say let's do a call tomorrow. So you're not asking. Okay, you're saying let's do a call tomorrow. You would be shocked, guys, and, and you might be saying to yourself right now like, well, that would never work for me. And here's the thing, sales is a trance. Whenever you go through a certain song and dance, kind of rhymes, but when you do that, you're gonna be shocked at how people respond in that moment, okay? Hence why Tony Robbins is able to make 13,000 people walk on fire and jump up and down and call a long lost friend after 10 years in front of 13,000 people. That doesn't happen because people willingly wake up and they're like, I can't wait to do something I've never done before in front of 13,000 people. It's a trance, okay? So you want to make sure that you do it in this order because people will just follow lead. Okay. And as long as it's in their best interest, then it's okay to do these kinds of things. Okay. Um, so as long as you know that you can legitimately deliver. So anyway, let's do a call tomorrow. You're leading so we can evaluate your options. You're not selling anything. What you want to do is help them understand what they have available to them. Okay, that's what this whole call is about. And then towards the end, they're able to raise their level of thinking, break through disbeliefs, and towards the end, you're able to help them. Um, we're gonna go over this, an alternate choice, future pace close. Okay, it's one of my favorites. Um, so we're gonna get into this, how you can reframe it on the end of the call real quick. So this way you can get them to wanna take action. Because again, we're in a time right now where there's plenty of opportunity, right? It's just a matter of how you can approach the opportunity. Most people are stuck in their traditional way of thinking based on what they've already done. And if they've been successful, why do anything differently, right? If they've been successful, then that must be the way to do things. So right now they're just having to take, take the bullet, but that's not true. You don't have to do that. Okay. And, uh, it was actually, my mom owns a local business as well and does really well. And we were talking about this and how, um, generating interest is the number one thing right now. I'm going to get into the reframe at the end, how you're going to use this reframe to close my famous alternate choice future pace close. Um, and this is after you've got them on the call and you've broken through all the disbeliefs. But just a quick story for you guys before we circle back to that. So it's all about generating interest right now. What you guys are gonna realize and the truth is, I'm not sitting here and telling you that you're gonna close every single call. It doesn't work like that. But you are gonna be able to close enough calls to be able to sustain or slightly grow your business. We have, right? And we work with local businesses or we work with uh, online companies that sell to local businesses and we're helping them do what I'm showing you here to be able to continue to sell local businesses. Okay. Um, so anyway, it's really important to make sure that you understand you won't sell everyone, but what we're going to go over in the terms of follow-up is going to be more important than ever. Okay. So it is going to be your obligation to make sure you're generating as much interest as possible and as much attention as possible. So you become that authority. And we've heard that word thrown around a lot, right? by people, uh, coaches and programs and service-based businesses. Like we want to make you the authorities. People trust you. Well, guess what guys? Now it's not just something people say. All right. In order to make sure that you remain relevant and credible, you're going to want to be that. All right. Cause when all this stuff blows over, it's going to be important to be number one in the terms of credibility, even in this time now, right? The only people that are going to like get any purchases and sales whatsoever are the authorities. All right, from a service-based business to an online to a digital product, whatever. Okay, it's the people that have the most authority that are gonna get the sales. So it's important to make sure that you're doing that now. So um, again, we're gonna get to the follow-up at the very end. First, I wanna circle back to the alternate choice future pace close for when you break through disbeliefs on the sales call, because now you know how to get them on the sales call. Um, so 
Here's how you go about that. Alternate choice is when you have two options, okay? A future pace is when you take somebody all the way through an option, okay? You walk them through it, similar to how you uh, will go through a close and set expectations on what's gonna happen next. That's referred to as a future pace, okay? Um, so an alternate choice would be something like, would you like the apple or would you like the orange, okay? That's an alternate choice future pace um, close where you combine the two. So would you like the apple or would you like the orange? Typically people that have an apple, what ends up happening is if they do one apple a day, they're never gonna have to go to the doctor and it's gonna strengthen their teeth. Now, people that, that choose an orange, what ends up happening is people that get the orange, a lot of time they like to take the orange peels, put them in their backpack or their gym bag. It eliminates the smell, so it's really great when you work out and it's also a little bit higher in, in acidity, so it's gonna be able to do you know, this thing for you. So which one would you prefer to go with? I like to say prefer to go with because this way they know that they're gonna go with one, they need to choose the one that makes the most sense for them, okay? Not which one do you like more or what do you think that you wanna move forward with, like stuff like that, it's too, you don't wanna get them to think, you wanna be able to get them to trust their intuition. Okay, that's why I use the word prefer. Um, all the little stuff matters, guys, when it comes to neuro-linguistic programming, like your brains are geared to do certain things at certain times, okay? Um, so it's really important to know what words to use, what are trigger words to people. Um, there's a strategy called uh, being strategically vague, and this is something I actually picked up in the corporate world, uh, of course, right, strategically vague. Um, but anyway, it, it's really held true. Um, but anyway, we're not gonna get into NLP right now, we're gonna focus on what we're here to talk about. Um, <laughs> Tiffany's like, Dan, you just sold me the orange. Um, but that's alternate choice. Another example of this would be if you were to uh, go to the movies with your spouse, right? Um, and then you say, you know, hey, there's this movie out and this movie out. So which one, uh, and if people that have normally gone to this movie, what they said about it was this, and then they ended up uh, having a bunch of drinks. It was really funny and they wanted to kind of relive the movie because they felt like they were actually there. But then there's this karate movie and what has happened is people that have gone to see this movie, I've heard that after it got five stars, people were going out and they literally thought they could do a Chuck Norris spin kick and then they would go to try to do that. And I heard this story about somebody that tried to do it in the garage and then they ended up kicking this watermelon and it was super funny. Uh, which one would you prefer to see? So at the end of the day, what happens is both of those options were your choice. So you win one way or the other, but now you're allowing somebody to actually walk through the reality with you through this future pace, okay? So this is something that I've you know, branded as an alternate choice future pace close. Now here's how you actually apply it into a sales call, okay? Because right now, uh, I'll just go through the script for you guys. So if it makes more sense now to get ahead, right? Cause you're gonna spend, uh, so let me give you a little context before we get into this, it probably won't make sense. So just so you guys know, there's two realities happening right now during this COVID thing, okay? People are making sales and then there's people not making sales and both of those people are in the same line of work. Okay, so there's people in one line of work making sales and people not making sales, okay? Both of those realities are very true right now. So you have to actually decide which one you wanna live in. Whatever you decide, you're gonna project onto your clients, your prospects, or whomever you're talking to, all right? So this is gonna come down to you. So you're the first person that needs to handle that. Um, the next thing is to understand that when you are relaying this message that I'm about to tell you, that you need to have confidence because confidence adds clarity and clarity will help you close the deal. Confidence closes, okay? So people right now can choose to prepare and plan, okay? So this way they can hit the ground running and whatever they choose to do now that they aren't doing will end up working in conjunction with what they were doing and they're gonna be a, a better business for it, okay? And you'll be a better business for it because you should be doing it yourself too. We're gonna get into that at the end. Um, on top of that, uh, if they wait, what is gonna end up happening is that they're gonna wait and then they're gonna be two months behind. So in two months, they don't get started on something. In two months, they're having to make up two months worth of ground they lost, and then it's gonna take them two months to actually get to where they would have already been. So they're not actually throwing away two months while this whole pandemic pans out, okay? You're actually throwing away six months, which guess what, guys? That's gonna put you nearly into 2021 already, which means you basically lost your entire year, okay? So now, now that you have some context, let's actually go through what this looks like. So, uh, so let me know. So we have two ways that we can go about this. Either A, we can wait to get started. We can go ahead and this option that you already said that you were interested in. 
we can wait to do that for the next two months. And what that would look like is this. If we decided to wait to do that and we address it in two months, what's gonna end up happening is everyone else that's pushing into the market is going to start to um, take that authority that you have already uh, achieved, like already have. And then on top of that, after the next two months uh, that you're planning for everything, they've already gotten a head start. So after you've finally gotten everything going, now you're getting adjusted to it, which might take you another two months. So if we chose to wait, we're looking at roughly a six month delivery time. Now that's option one. Option two, if you choose to do this, what we would do is get started today. And what that's gonna look like is this, okay? We're going to do this, this, and this for the fulfillment to get you started up. And then from there, we're gonna be able to start to drop your expectation here. Um, and then what you can expect in the next two months when everybody else that chose option one is trying to just now get started, you can expect to already be that authority. Not only are your sales gonna cost you less, which means your margins are gonna be higher, but that means that you're gonna be able to start focusing on the other things that you told me were also bottlenecks being this. So knowing that these are both of the options that we have available to us right now, which reality would you prefer to live in? So what you're gonna notice there, this is an alternate choice future pace close. We gave two options and we walked down both with them because you have to be able to walk through it with them. Uh, remember sales is a combination of emotion and logic. So this is you actually like building on that emotion and the logic is gonna be the numbers of what makes the most sense, okay? So you're combining both. Let me get a one in the comments if you guys are getting anything out of this. Um, I know we've had a few dozen people on this whole time. Typically I do these on just YouTube or my Facebook group or private training. So I accidentally put it on my personal page. So I hope you guys are getting something out of this. Uh, cause I never do these kinds of videos on here, but anyway, let me know down below if you're getting anything out of this. So the next thing we're going to get into is follow up. Wow. This is such an important topic right now because a lot of businesses have relied on just strictly closing new. And we have a saying at the sales agency, my company that new is for newbies. Okay. So we're really big and the team is really big on understanding this, that we don't train one trick ponies here. Okay. So when I say a one trick pony, and there's probably gonna be a lot of sales reps that get offended by this, but the truth is in a world, in the corporate world, which if you guys don't know my background, I've done six president's clubs in sales in the corporate world before I started my sales agency in 2017. And I did those president's clubs before I was 25 years old. All right, it's not my first rodeo and I did it in three different industries, between three different industries, door to door, business to consumer and business to business. So what I can tell you is that in the world of corporate where you are expected to be able to manage a book of business, you are expected to upsell, you're expected to downsell, you're expected to make sure that you're following up on leads as they come in in a variety of ways. Nowadays, honestly, the market's gotten a little spoiled, right? They're getting used to only being good at closing new leads. So we have a saying at the sales agency, agency that new is for newbies, okay? New is for newbies. You don't want to be a one trick pony. You need to be able to do it all. At the end of the day, if you're a sales rep watching this, at the end of the day, if you're trained by us, you're going to understand this, that you are a business owner of your own. Last time I checked bro and bro at that you're 1099. Okay. So last time I checked 1099s are they're technically their own business owner. All right. You need to make, know your book of business, like the back of your hand. You should know your book of business better than your first name. Okay. Like it sounds extreme, but it's true. The same way that the person that owns the product or service that you're selling, well, guess what? They only get paid when revenue comes in. Okay. They're a business owner too. You're both business owners. All right. You just happen to be selling whatever they have. So it's really important to understand that you need to be able to manage your book of business in that way. So let me keep going and circle back. So a few things they want to do to make sure that you are following up to make sure that you don't just focus on new right? Cause this is where a lot of businesses are going to fall apart. They're not going to be maximizing, uh, you know, the current dollars that they have, which is their current clients. Uh, they don't have any upsells, which you should have, right? You should have a core offer. Um, you should have a downsell MRR and I'll go over our structure too here in a second. So you can see what that looks like. Um, but you should have all those within your business right now. If you don't, and you only have one offer, like let's say that you're only selling a, you're a lead gen company, you're only selling leads. Well, all of our clients right now, we're showing them how to be able to set up uh, done uh, or do it yourself products, right? An upsell from their current lead gen service uh, and then a downsell. So the current lead gen service is actually the core offer. Okay. 
If you guys aren't familiar with my reversal method where we teach people how to sell on long-term contracts, where we offer a three month and the client asks us for 12, that's our reversal method, that's the core offer. So um, we're gonna get to that. But in terms of follow-up, here's what that looks like. Because the last thing you wanna do is you, want, don't, you don't wanna be that person, right? That business that is constantly shooting out emails to the same person or a text message or constantly calling them or always hitting them up in the DM. Like there needs to be a combination of what that needs to look like. So what we do, uh, we do texts, emails, um, and I'm gonna back up and go into depth more detail in a sec. Uh, articles, so like sending trainings, things like that, um, like written articles, videos, so whether that be videos that we've already created or specialized videos that we have in a vault. Um, social posts, which is similar to this video, this is a social post, so whether you do this on LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, whatever your, uh, whatever platform you leverage that has the most assets on it, uh, that's when you leverage. We've spent the last year and a half making sure that we're, you know, well-rounded. So we have a strong YouTube channel. We have almost, what, I think five and a half thousand connections on LinkedIn. Uh, we have a Facebook group of like 8,500 people. You know, my personal Facebook page just has roughly 5,000 people on it. Um, so it's really, and our email list is like 17,000. Our chatbot list is like 3,000. Like it's important to make sure that we've spent the last year and a half being well-rounded. Um, so if you haven't been doing that, it's gonna be important to make sure that you are now doing that. Um, so this way you have people that you can talk to, right? That doesn't cost you any money. Uh, we're not gonna get into strategies for that right now. I just wanna get into a few different follow-up strategies. Uh, you wanna be able to um, do collabs if you can, right? Talking to either your clients, whether that be on your Facebook page and doing a little interview with them, uploading it to YouTube. This is called repurposing content. Um, it's gonna be super important because the people that you've already contacted, guys, they are going to look at other platforms of yours to see like, well, what else does this guy do? Like, this is pretty good. Like, I didn't know he did this, or I didn't know this worked like that, or wow, they actually do deliver results. It's gonna be important to make sure you have all that, right? Because again, you are becoming the authority, okay? People at, in, th in this, especially in this day and age, are gonna buy from the authority, okay? especially when people are not in major spend mode on certain things, like they are on certain things, they are on certain things, it's gonna be important to make sure that you're the go-to more than ever now. Um, so for emails, you wanna focus on email blasts, which are value blasts. I actually sent one out on like um, high performance habits that I do on Sunday night to prepare for my week. No CTAs. I mean, I always have a CTA in my email signature, but I didn't put a CTA in the email body itself. And I have never gotten so many replies from people that just said, thank you. Like, this is actually really amazing. I did this, I'm really excited to like put this in play. Like, this is really great that you sent out this kind of information of free value. One person said, I never even respond to cold emails, um, but this was just something that I had to respond to. Thank you for this. And it's that kind of stuff, guys, that's going to get you to put you ahead, okay? Um, so these are what we do in the terms of follow-up. Remember, new is for newbies. Like, you gotta be able to close more than new inbound leads really well. Um, because we're in a market now that has brainwashed us to think that you're only a good sales advisor if you can close new inbound leads at a high amount. But the truth is the FU money is still in the follow-up, right? If you haven't heard that saying, it's kind of old school. But you want to make sure that you can maximize every dollar that comes in. You should have an upsell. We'll, we'll go over our model here in a second, what that looks like, in case you need like an example. Um, we have a service-based business and then we have a uh, coaching business, okay? And then we have some uh, do-it-yourself products, okay? So we'll get into that model in a second. Let me know down below if you guys are getting anything out of this. Again, I never do these on my personal page. This was a total accident. I thought I was in my Facebook group. Uh, so if you're getting anything out of this, drop it below. If you're on YouTube, then subscribe to the channel. Let us know what you think down below. Um, all right, so let's get into what the business model can look like. Uh, as you guys know, we've already gone over how to get them on the call, how to reframe the call, how to use alternate choice future pacing to help you close the call, uh, how to do follow up, different ways to go about that. Uh, here's a couple different ways that we, or not a couple ways, this is how we do our model. Uh, we have our core offer, and then we have, we have our upsell offer, uh, which our core offer is where we train sales. and help you with traffic. So this is for people that are not currently um, driving in five to 15 appointments a day, because that's what we do per day. So our core offer helps people get the essentials for sales and to be able to get five to 15 appointments per day. 
And in this program, people typically make their money back within like 60 days or less. Then we have over here where we staff a sales rep. We have a guarantee on this. Uh, this is our upsell. So it's important right now, especially in this day and age where if somebody's gonna spend money, they're now gonna wanna make sure that they're always gonna be making the right choice. So it's important to make sure you have some type of guarantee, some irresistible offer, um, something that you can truly fulfill on. Like we already know we can fulfill on this. So that's why we have this for when we recruit and staff sales reps into agencies. Um, so we have that. Now what's important for this in this next upsell for you is that it can be reoccurring. This is one of the tricks, right? Is to make your upsell a reoccurring offer, okay? And then you have a downsell, okay? And your downsell is also MRR. So the thing is a lot of, um, there's a reason why my Facebook group is seven figure sales secrets for coaches and consultants because there's been a lot of confusion in the market over the last couple of years where people would say to themselves like, well, I'm a social media marketing agency. I don't wanna be a guru course creator. And then there's people that are selling courses and they're like, well, I don't wanna do a service base. I just wanna sell courses or do coaching. And the thing is guys, the reason why we have coaches and consultants is because it's actually one of the same, okay? And people are starting to realize that now, like service-based businesses, like our digital marketing clients, they're starting to realize that, oh shoot, I do need to have something that I could sell on the phone or my, my sales reps can sell on the phone to help me mitigate my cost for when we don't close a deal so we can still expand the brand and still be able to um, not lose money. So this is your do-it-yourself, right? That offer. Um, so they're starting to realize that they need that. And all the course creators are starting to realize that they need something that can be higher ticket that's also gonna be service-based if they can, but if not, coaching, right? Because they need something else because people need more help right now. So now what people thought were two different things are merging together, but they've always been merged together. People just didn't build a business the way they should have. And I fell victim to that in year one too. Um, so I was actually on both ends of the spectrum. Like I went from being a digital marketing company, uh, you know, we did well with that and then doing a, a course, a, a do-it-yourself course where we did well with that. And then I started to realize they needed to be merged together. So I was in the same boat you're in if that's where you're at right now. So don't feel bad about it. Uh, I'm just letting you know that they're actually one of the same. That's why my art of sales program that these clients are in is for coaches and consultants because at the end of the day, you know, you still need a full business. It's one of the same. Um, so the trick here is can your upsell be MRR high ticket and can your downsell be MRR high ticket whenever they get done with your core offer. So that's what we have set up for people that come in and then we have our mini offers. And these things are going to be anything from like $27 to like, you know, $500 or even a thousand. Um, so this just on the side, we don't play around as much with this. Um, we're mainly like this. So this is what ours looks like. So the trick, so for us, we train sales, uh, sales teams and we help them get their traffic up organically. If they don't, you know, they're not getting five to 15 appointments per day. That's core offer. Number one, once they need to start getting off the phone, we help them hire a sales rep so they can start getting off the phone and scaling their sales through hiring a sales rep. Our guarantee with this upsell of ours, is that you make your money back in 30 days or less from them starting. Our downsell is to continue to train the sales teams. So even if they don't hire us, our downsell is that we can still train them on a month to month basis. Okay. Um, so these, this all becomes MRR. Okay. So whenever you're going in and you're selling, this is how you maximize your dollar. Like you're getting people in here, or if you start with a low ticket offer to get them indoctrined into your methodologies, then these people end up wanting to come up here and either book a call with you through one of your platforms or an ad or whatever. And then these people upsell and downsell, but it's up to you to set up follow-ups on the back end to do this. And this is where a lot of people miss is that they're not following up with their clients and they're not making sure as you see results, you upsell. Whenever I work with my clients, because we do the same thing, we practice what we preach. What I teach my program, what I help my clients to do is to make sure that every week when you're following up with the clients you've sold, is to make sure that you are making sure they're seeing results in real life as they see on paper. 
one of the lines I always use to let them know, like my experience with the yellow pages when I sold digital marketing there, was that typically what was on paper in the terms of results wasn't always what was happening in real life. Like just because we generated those leads or whatever does not mean that's actually what's happening in real life. So I tell that story and then they're always like, yeah, definitely, I would love to do weekly calls with you. So you jump on weekly calls and if you're a digital marketing company, you're gonna love this or any service-based company, but you always do your weekly follow-up because as people are seeing results, guess when the best time is to make a sale? Guess when the best time is to get a referral? Is when people are kicking ass, all right? So whenever you start seeing that happen, whether it's after week one, based on your expectations that you set with them, week two, week three, week four, land and expand, okay? You get the client and then you upsell, all right? Like we got a client and they never sold contracts before ever in their life and they've already sold 30 grand their first month and uh, our sales team is already hopping on, hops on calls with them regularly to see how they're doing and they're like, we want, we're ready to do alumni, like we wanna do alumni, like put us in the month to month, like let, we, we are definitely staying in here if we bring on a salesperson, whether we hire them from you or not, like we wanna be here, okay? So we're constantly, like we, we actually have an upsell coming in today as well. Like, um, so, and, get, and granted guys, that doesn't cost you anything. If you're running ads, there's no cost for acquisition outside of your commissionable payouts as a business owner if you're maximizing on this model, which we teach you how to do in, in you know, my programs. But at the end of the day, if this is happening, go back and rewatch this video. I'm gonna show you how to address this because this is about all the time I got. I'll answer some questions. If you have any questions right now, drop them below. Um, so this is, I, I show you at the beginning of the video how to address this, how to get people on a call from Messenger if they tell you this in Messenger or an email. I taught you how to be able to reframe on the actual sales call towards the end. So this way you can go in and make it a little bit easier to get the sale using my alternate choice future pace close. Um, and then like some different ideas for follow up if you're not doing them. So you're not being uh, just bringing in new leads, not closing them and losing money. So I hope this was super helpful for everybody. Um, like I said, I thought this was in my Facebook groups. So it's kind of funny. It's cool that we've had a few dozen people on the whole time though, on my personal page. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And if you're watching this live right now, give us a thumbs up, help us expand the reach. If you like anybody would benefit from this, feel free to share the video. Uh, but again, we're in a time right now, guys, where there are two very real realities. And it's that people are, are still making sales and people aren't making sales. And then there are people in the same line of work making the sales or not making the sales. So they're both very real realities. You just have to choose which reality you prefer to live in. And then you'll be able to operate from that state of mind. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I'll see if you guys want to join my Facebook group. I typically do these a couple times a week in there. Uh, it's kind of funny. So anyway, I'll holler at you guys later, kick some ass, and we're all going to get through this. So shoot me a DM if you have any questions. Later.